Shalom, everybody. This is Tony Robinson from Restoration of Torah Ministries. And in the previous podcast, um, what we did is we looked at Revelation 12 uh, about the woman. And we said that the woman was not Mary and gave some reasons why. So this episode here is who is the woman? Okay, so who is the woman of, uh, of, of Revelation chapter 12? And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start off uh, by reading that passage. I'll just read a little bit of it. It says, Now a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of twelve stars. Then being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. Okay, so I'm going to stop there, and we're going to talk about that uh, in the next 20, 25 minutes. And so I'm going to make two main points today. The first point I'm going to make is that the woman uh, represents people destined to exercise Adonai's authority, the Lord's authority. That's the first thing I want to show. We're going to make some thematic connections to prove that. And then the second thing that I want to um, prove is that the woman is the nation of Israel. So we're going to talk about those two subjects today here in part one. And then in part two, we'll give you some more evidence why uh, the woman of Revelation 12 is the nation of Israel, um, the Jewish nation, the Jewish people. Okay. So first of all, um, we already read uh, how the woman uh, the key to understanding this is looking at uh, the clothing of the woman. She was clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of 12 stars. So what we want to do is we want to uh, make a thematic connection to the sun, moon, and the 12 stars. So where have we read about the sun and the moon and the 12 stars? That would be Genesis 1, 14 through 18. So I'm going to read that to you. Um, then God said, let there be lights in the, well, before I read that, let me just say this. I want to say this in order for us to understand the book of revelation. Okay. We are going to have to understand the Torah, the first five books of the Bible and the rest of the Tanakh or uh, what Christians call the old Testament. The reason why is because the book of revelation was not written in a vacuum. And so to the extent that we don't know the Torah and we don't know uh, the rest of the Tanakh, the Old Testament, um, we're not going to be able to um, understand the book of Revelation. And so it's very, very important that we understand the Torah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make thematic connections. We're going to look for similar words, phrases, themes, events, circumstances, situations. Okay, we're going to look for similar uh, of those. So let's start off right here. Um, so we made our first connection is going to be between the sun, the moon, and the stars, and it's going to take us to Genesis 1, 14 through 18. Then God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light on earth. And it was so. And key in on this phrase right here, then God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth and to rule over the day and over the night. And you notice how I kept emphasizing to rule. So the first thing I want to talk about is what the woman, it says that she's clothed with the sun and the moon and, 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 and under her feet and a garland of 12 stars. So the first connection we should make should be to Genesis 1, 14 through 18, where it talks about those. Now, according to Genesis 1, 14 to 18, the sun and the moon and the stars, they are thematically connected to authority, dominion, ruling, and reigning in that they are to rule over the day and the night, okay? In that they are to rule over the day and over the night. Um, in other words, these lights are lights of rulership, dominion, and authority. So automatically we see that the woman is associated with or thematically connected to authority because that's what the sun and the moon and the stars represent. They, they are authority. And so the woman is clothed with 
uh, that which represents authority. And she's standing upon that which represents authority. And she has a garland around her head of that which represents authority. Okay, so let's look at something else. She's clothed with the sun, it says. Uh, so in the Bible, your nature is equivalent to what you're clothed with. For example, in Revelation 7, 9, it talks about those who are clothed in white robes. Well, those who are clothed in white robes, they have clean, pure, and righteous lives. Or let's think about 1 Peter 5, 5. Uh, where it talks about being clothed with humility. Well, those who are clothed with humility are humble, okay? And so likewise, the woman, she's clothed with the sun, okay? And so that means that she is clothed with authority, meaning that she has authority and dominion um, that she's going to exercise, okay? So this is how we're able to take this passage in Revelation 12, 1 and begin to build upon it, make thematic connections and see what Adonai wants us to teach us about this woman, okay? The other thing I'd like to bring out is, think about this, according to Revelation 1, 16, where it says he had in his right hand seven stars out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword and his countenance was like the sun shining in its strength. Look Look at that description of Yeshua. It says that his countenance was like the sun shining in his strength. Now, it, it's pretty easy to see that this woman, her countenance is going to be like the sun shining in its strength also to a certain extent. Obviously, not as much as Yeshua's, but it says that she was clothed with what? She was clothed with the sun. So what I want to point out here is that this woman is spoken of, spoken of in terms similar to that of Yeshua in that just as Yeshua is so glorious uh, that his countenance was like the sun shining, this woman, this is a glorious woman who um, is clothed with the sun. So this is a very, very special woman. Very, very special, special woman. What about under her feet? Let's talk about that. Um, so in the Bible, many times someone exercising authority, uh, that's pictured by them standing on that with that which they are to rule over. So remember, Adonai said, he told Israel, he said, hey, I'll give you every place where the foot, where your feet will tread upon. I'm going to give that to you. And so when it says that the woman had the moon that the moon was under her foot that's showing that the woman will exercise some kind of authority or power over the moon and so uh what i believe this is is a reference to israel's and and so now we're talking about israel right so the woman we've we basically we've said that whoever this woman is uh that she was going to be given all sorts of authority right well now i'm going to specifically say israel uh, because I believe that that's Israel's responsibility to set the holy days according to the cycle of the moon. We read in Leviticus 23, 4, these are the feasts of Adonai, holy convocations. And notice what it says. It says, which you shall proclaim at their appointed times. Okay, so the first thing I want you to notice is that it says these are the feasts of the Lord or the feasts of Adonai. So whose feasts are they? Are these Jewish feasts? When we talk about Passover and unleavened bread and Sukkot and Yom Kippur, they're not Jewish feasts. Adonai takes ownership of these feasts right here. He says, these are the feasts of Adonai, holy convocations. But even though they're his feasts, look at who he says shall proclaim them at their appointed times. He's talking to the nation of Israel. He said, which you shall appoint, you shall proclaim at their appointed times. In other words, it's the nation of Israel that has the authority uh, uh, to be able to proclaim those appointed feasts. OK, and so, again, I think that this is a hint um, um, at, it, the, at this woman being uh, Israel. 
not a strong, uh, not a, not necessarily a strong hit. Hint, my my strongest hint is coming right now. Well, my next to the strongest hint is coming now. All right, let's talk about the garland of twelve stars. Okay, the garland of twelve stars. So, <clears throat> this garland of twelve stars it hints at Adonai's authority. Remember, we've already learned that this woman is going to be exercising authority and dominion, which is pictured by her being uh, covered by the sun, standing on the moon, and having a garland of, tw- a garland of 12 stars. And the reason why it hints at Adonai's authority is because the number 12 hints to us at the 12 tribes, okay? It hints the 12 tribes, because that's the nation that Adonai created um, that he wants to rule uh, the world through, okay? So God's system of authority was, is, and always be based upon the 12 tribes of Israel, okay? It's always going to be that way, okay? In eternity, the nations of the world will be ruled by uh, the nation of Israel. And there, there are many scriptures that, sh- that speak of that. I'm going to give you one here. Yeshua told the disciples in Matthew 19, 28, he says, so, so it says, so Yeshua said to them, assuredly, I say to you that in the regeneration, when the son of man sits on the throne of his glory, you who have followed me will also sit on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. And not only will they judge the 12 tribes of Israel, they will be judging the the nations of the world. I don't I don't have a scripture reference for that with me at this at this time, but uh, there are many scriptures that uh, speak about that. So, in other words, in other words, in 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 the Bible, God's authority and His plan to rule and exercise authority and dominion in the earth is through the 12 tribes of Israel, okay? It's through that nation. So the garland of 12 stars definitely hints to you that the woman is the nation of Israel. But uh, let's continue to go because, as I said, I have a I have a really, really strong reason why it's the nation of Israel coming up here in a few minutes. Um, but I want to, what I want to show you is that in the Bible, sometimes stars represent people because remember it says a garland of 12 stars, um, in Genesis twenty two seventeen, when uh, Adonai gave the promise to Abraham after the binding of Isaac, he said, "Blessing in blessing I will bless you, and in multiplying I will multiply your descendants as the as what as the stars of heaven." Right. So sometimes stars can represent can represent people, or in this case, I'm saying that the twelve stars. Uh, is symbolic of the 12 tribes. It, and it may be um, the 12 patriarchs of the, um, of the nation of Israel, uh, you know, Judah, Simeon, Levi, or it may be the 12 apostles. I'm not sure. But what I'm saying is that as soon as you see the number 12, you need to think Israel. You don't think church, you think Israel when you hear the number 12. Okay. Uh, so here we see that people are spoken of as stars, Abraham's descendants. How about Numbers 24, 17? It says, I see him now. I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. Now notice what it says. says, a star shall come out of Jacob. Okay. A scepter shall rise out of Israel and batter the brow of Moab, Moab, and destroy all the sons of tumult. So again, so it says a star shall come out of Jacob. Now, most of us realize that this is a messianic prophecy of Yeshua, and he's referred to what? As a star. So again, a person referred to a star. And again, what I want you to notice is how this star, which is a light, remember this, remember Genesis 1, 14 through 18, where we said how the sun, the moon, and the stars spoke of authority and power to rule. Notice again right here, it says a star shall come out of Jacob. That's the light. A scepter shall rise out of Israel. That's the ruling and reigning part. So again, notice how the star or a light is associated with authority, rulership, and dominion. And then the last verse I want to mention to you is Daniel 12, 3. It says, those who are wise shall shine 
like the brightness of the firmament, hallelujah, and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. So we have numerous, we have many, many passages uh, which speak, which speak of people as stars. So again, I am suggesting to you that when the scripture says that she has a garland of 12 uh, stars on, that this is uh, speaking of of God's rulership and authority through the nation, through the 12 tribes of Israel. And then the last thing that I want to uh, say, um, it, no, actually, I don't want to say it. So now I want to talk about, so remember at the beginning, I said we would talk about two things. Number one, uh, that the, the woman represents people destined to exercise Adonai's authority. So, so all of the connections that I've given you so far are connections to prove that point that, um, you know, we, we, we made a connection to the sun, the moon, and the 12 stars. We made that connection to Genesis 1.14. We talked about how those lights were to rule over the day and the night. And so those three specific types of light are associated with rulership, leadership, and authority. And that's what the woman is clothed with, stands upon, and has around her head is authority to lead. So now what I want to do is I just want to say, I want to show you how we know the nation, the woman is the nation of Israel. And again, as I said, this is part one. Uh, we're going to have a couple more parts, but listen to, we're going to make a thematic connection because in Revelation 12, 1, it talks about the woman and it says she's clothed with the sun the moon under her feet and a garland of 12 stars. Think of that sun, moon, and 12 stars. Now we've already made one great, awesome thematic connection back to Genesis, right? Um, and um, that was to Genesis 1, 14 through 16, but there's another great connection that we can make. And that's to, have you guessed it? Genesis chapter 37, verses nine through 11. And that's the story of one of Joseph's dreams. So let me uh, let me read that to you. Then he dreamed the dream, still another dream. And he, taught, speaking of Joseph, told it to his brothers and said, look, I have dreamed another dream. Now I want you all to listen to this. And this time, the sun, the moon, and the 11 stars bowed down to me. So right there, the sun, moon, and 11 stars. There you have the sun, the moon, and the stars. Now he said 11 stars, they bow down to him. He would be the 12th star. So again, the way we, the way we interpret scripture is we make key thematic connections to other verses that have the same words, themes, events, situations, circumstances, etc. So he told it to his father and brothers, and his father rebuked him and said to him, What is this dream that you have dreamed? Shall your mother and I and your brothers indeed come to bow down to the earth before you? Now I want you to I want you to listen to how Jacob interpreted Joseph's dream. He said, shall, shall your mother and I and your brother. So how is he interpreting it? He's interpreting it that the son is himself, Jacob. The moon is his mother. And the stars, the 11 stars, are the brothers. Okay? So in other words, Jacob is, a, Jacob, listen to this dream. And Jacob interprets the sun, moon, and the stars as being himself, Jacob, um, the, the, the boy's mother, and the 11 stars. So um, this is the nation of Israel because Jacob and his family, they are the nucleus. They are the nucleus of the nation of Israel. Remember, Adonai said, I'm going to make of you a great nation, but I'm going to do it while you're in Egypt. And so it's Jacob's family that becomes the nation of Israel. Therefore, the sun, the moon, and the 11 stars of Revelation chapter 12, verse 1, is the same, is prophetically spoken of in the dream of Joseph in Genesis 37 as the sun and the moon and the, and the 11 stars, Jacob, I mean, Joseph being the 12th. Now, what I want you to think about this, I want you to think about this. Not only is Jacob and his family the nucleus of the nation of Israel, 
Jacob and his family are actually prophetically, pro, the, the, Jacob and his family, they actually prophetically represent the full and entire nation of Israel. And at some point we can go through that thematically as you watch Jacob's life, everything that he does is a historical prophecy of what will happen later on to the nation. We'll have to look at that some other time. But I'm going to give you one verse. Remember when Jacob, uh, remember Jacob and his family, They had, remember Jacob had fled from, from uh, Esau and then finally, and then he fled from Laban on his way back to the promised land. And then remember he made it to the promised land and he got to Shechem. And then remember Dina was raped uh, by, by uh, Shechem. So listen to what it says in Genesis 34, 7. It says, and the sons of Jacob came in from the field when they heard it, that is when they heard about Dina being raped, and the men were grieved and very angry. Now, I want you to listen to this phrase right here, remembering that I said that not only is Jacob and his family the nucleus of the nation of Israel, Jacob and his family prophetically are pictures of of the entire nation. Notice what it says. And it says, the men were grieved and very angry because he had done a disgraceful thing in Israel. <laughs> oh, I love that. By lying with Jacob's daughter, a thing which ought not to be done. What? What do you mean he had done a disgraceful thing in Israel? Did you catch that? Did you see how Adonai just kind of slipped that one in the scriptures right there? It says, because he had done a disgraceful thing in Israel, as if the nation of Israel already existed. You see that? Because he had done a disgraceful thing in Israel. Well, it's just, it's just Jacob and, and his sons and their families. It's not a whole nation, but the Bible is speaking here as if Jacob, and his family are the nation of Israel already. Always remember this. This is such an awesome verse, Genesis 34, 7. And the men were grieved and very angry because he had done a disgraceful thing in Israel by lying with Jacob's daughter. And so in Genesis 37, 9 through 11, where we read, where we read about Jake, Joseph's dream with the sun and the moon and the 11 stars, that is the connection that we make to the woman of Revelation 12, who was clothed with the sun, stood on the moon and had a garland of 12 stars. And so that is the major connection that we need to see uh, in order to see that that woman is the nation of Israel. Okay. And so the other thing I want to say is that quite often um, what we're going to find out is that if we want to understand the book of Revelation, we're going to need to go back to the book, uh, the books of the beginning. And sometimes when we want to understand what's going on in the beginning of the Bible, we'll have to go to the end of the Bible, to Revelation, okay? And uh, we saw an example of that with uh, the fact that in Genesis 3, it says that uh, Adonai said, I will put enmity between this, you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. And it kind of just leaves it open there. Well, who is the seed of this woman? right? Who's the seed of the serpent? We find out in the book of Revelation because in Revelation 12, 17, it says that the serpent went to make war and it uses the exact same words in Genesis 3, 15, the seed of the woman. He went to make war with the remnant of her seed, the remnant of her seed. Who is the remnant of her seed? It's the seed of who? The seed of the woman. And so Genesis 3, 15 I will put enmity between you and the woman, your seed and her seed. Whose seed? The seed of the woman. We find out who the seed of the woman is in Revelation 12, 17, because the serpent goes to make war with the remnant of her seed. And so we need the old and the new to help interpret each other. So I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave you with that, that the woman of Revelation 12 is uh, the nation of Israel, that nation over there in the land of Israel right now. And um, in, in the next podcast, we're going to look at some other reasons why uh, the woman of Revelation chapter 12 is the nation of Israel. Okay. 
But until then, uh, I just want to say, may Adonai bless you guys. Uh, may he open your eyes, as it says in Psalm 119, verse 18, to behold wondrous things from his Torah. May Adonai bless you guys in the mighty name of Yeshua. Amen.